Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Eminence, Archbishop El Peter Forrest of America to deliver the invocation. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, Mr. Prime Minister, and Mrs. Mitsotaki. Dear friends, Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. Our joy today to be in the presence of the leaders of the birthplace of democracy and the world's greatest democracy commences with our Paschal greeting, namely Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. Because here at the White House, we are celebrating the resurrection of the Greek nation with its prime minister for the first time. This special commemoration of the bicentennial of the Greek revolution, bicentennial plus one, 201, in the year of the centennial of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America as the premier eparchy of the ecumenical patriarchate is an unforgettable honor to the Greek American community. Thank you, Mr. President. And also, it is a sign to the world of the commitment to democracy and to freedom in a time of the rise of autocrats around the world and the struggle to maintain integrity, national integrity, against the unjust aggression in Ukraine. Mr. President, your friendship with Hellenism and your support of the Hellenic Republic are well known to all. Mr. Prime Minister, you have reached out beyond the borders of Greece to invite the best of the world and to offer the best of our homeland, of our patrida. Together, you make us all optimistic, optimistic for a better world and for a brighter tomorrow. Greece, the wellspring of democratic values and the wellspring of the Western civilization and America together. America, the world's best hope of liberty and self-determination for all. We thank you. We thank you both for your strong support of justice and especially for the freedom of the purely spiritual mission of the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople. May God bless you both, Mr. President and Mr. Prime Minister, the First Ladies and your families with health and long life, with wisdom, with grace, and with strength. And may our Creator bless the course of human events that we now pass in the world so that our life, our liberty, and our pursuit of happiness are always shielded by the principles and the values of democracy, the gift of Hellas, the gift of Greece to the world, and the inspiration of the American dream. Zito y Ameriki, Zito y Alada. Thank you, everyone. Please sit down. And thank you, Your Eminence, for your kind words. Thank you. And welcome, finally, to the bicentennial celebration and the very in, first in-person Greek heritage event of our administration. And it's, it's so wonderful to see so many friends with us today. I'm told that there's a Greek proverb that says, a society becomes great when its elder plant trees, whose, plant trees whose shade they know they will never enjoy. 
from democracy and philosophy to astronomy and medicine to art and literature, the legacy of Greece touches every corner of our culture. We all enjoy the shades of its branches. And I've had the chance to uh, visit Greece many times over the years. And I've stood in awe at the history of Athens and the beauty of the islands. And each time I've been welcomed with open arms. So it's my pleasure to be able to return that welcome to you, our Greek um, and Greek American friends. And I'm especially honored to welcome Prime Minister Mitsotaki and his wife. And it, we spent a couple uh, minutes getting to know one another. And it was so nice to get to know you and Sophia and uh, Daphne. You want to stand up and say hello? <laughs> Your work is so inspiring, and I hope that we can continue to deepen our friendship. The story of America is the story of all of you. You are a part of our beautiful and rich history. You help write our future every day, and the trees you plant will continue to cover our world. So thank you very much. And now, as all of you know, this community has been a true partner to my husband throughout the years, and you mean so much to him. So please welcome your president, my husband, Joe Biden. <laughs> Thank you. The remnants, I've been hanging around the Greek American community for so long. As a Roman Catholic, I bless myself the wrong way. <laughs> I find myself going right. I don't know. I, uh, the Pope is not real crazy about my change. <laughs> Welcome to the White House. It's welcome. It's wonderful to be able to host a reception again in person and to welcome the Prime Minister to Washington. We've had good conversations. I'm delighted to welcome your wife and daughters today, and as well because uh, when it comes to Greek American relations, it's all about family, in my experience. As we, my grandfather Finney would say, that's the Irish of it. <laughs> but I want to welcome Speaker Pelosi. Where are you, Nancy? There you go. And Paul Pelosi, her husband. And the members of Congress that are here today, including a great many proud Greek Americans that are here with us today. And if you will excuse a point of personal privilege, I'd like to uh, introduce John Sarbanes. I want you to know how much we all are thinking about missing your dad today, every day. His dad was an enormous influence on me and educated me a lot when I got here as a 30-year-old kid in the his United mom. States. Oh, his mom and there. Missing, no, and missing his mom. Oh, yes, excuse me. <laughs> and missing your mom as well. But your dad really uh, took me to school, and I appreciate it. And your eminence, it's great to get to honor and see you again, what an honor it is. And I want to thank you for your moral leadership and all the work of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America is doing to shine a light in the world. And last year, we had to uh, commemorate the bicentennial of independence virtually uh, because of the pandemic. And by the way, I want to thank uh, the proud Greek Americans who are in the forefront of the fight against COVID-19 and our efforts to vaccinate the world. Last year, we celebrated 200, this year, we celebrate 201 years at the end of the year of the bicentennial celebration. 
And it's an opportunity to honor the history of our two nations and peoples and how we share so much together, a chance to look to the future and we, that we're going to build together. I'm incredibly proud of the first year my presidency was able to be the first year of the next 100 years of relations between Greece and the United States of America. <laughs> It's no exaggeration to say that today our friendship and partnership and our alliance is closer and stronger than it's ever been. We had a great conversation, and uh, the, 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 the dangerous part for you all is we like one another a lot. <laughs> our two nations are working together across the board on climate, on energy, trade, investment, on defense, disaster response, and so much more. And our new ambassador to Greece, George Tunis, a proud Greek American is with us again today. <clears throat> I'm not sure that I was prouder to be elected president or George to be named ambassador, which he was. <laughs> but George is, thank you, pal. And has just taken up his post in Athens to uh, continue carrying forward this important work. And the prime minister, uh, I think there is no area as vital for Greece and the United States to stand together then in the defense of our shared and diplomatic principles and our democratic systems. The United States and the world owe a debt to the ancient Greek ideas that first uh, taught us that we, the people, and the demos, our democracy, can control our own destiny. And we, you made us believe it in the idea that has endured for a millennia but it's also an idea that every generation has had to fight to uphold. Every generation has to defeat democracy's mortal foes, because in our imperfect world, appetites and ambitions of a few forever seek to dominate the lives and liberties of the many. And sadly, we have both discussed, uh, including uh, the Summit of Democracies last year, that democracy is more under assault today than including in the United States than any time in the recent past. But the Greek people know, just as the American people do, that freedom and democracy are worth sacrificing for, just as the ideals of the ancient Athenians inspired America's founders. The American Revolution, I'm presumptuous to say, helped inspire Greek patriots to fight for their own independence over 201 years ago. And, and Greece remembers that when dictators and strongmen seek to dominate their neighbors, there's only one answer, oxy, oxy. No, no. During World War II, when the Axis forces of fascism sweeping across Europe, Greece said no, inspiring the world to its resistance. Today, the war and wisdom and the wanton disinformation have returned to Europe with Russia's brutal and unprovoked attack on its neighbor, Ukraine. We're seeing horrific atrocities and war crimes children being buried in mass graves, millions of refugees fleeing Putin's war, and Greece and the United States standing as one to support the people of Ukraine and impose severe economic costs on Russia. To hold Putin accountable, and I want to thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for the moral courage, and I mean it, the moral courage and clarity you have shown from the very beginning of this crisis, speaking out immediately to condemn Russia's aggression welcoming Ukrainian refugees, being a bulwark of security for NATO's eastern and southeastern Europe and the Mediterranean. Together, we're showing the power and capacity of democracies to be able to act in unison. And we're helping Ukrainians say no to Russian aggression. And we're saying no to tyranny and to the idea that autocracies will outpace democracies in the 21st century, because that's what is at stake here, in my view. On a personal note, it's wonderful to see so many friends here today. Friends like Andy and Mike Monatos. Where are you guys? There you go. <laughs> Back a long way. Grew up with these events over the years and since I was a senator and vice president. And uh, Father Alex, who can't be here today, I wanted him to know that uh, he's the reason I blessed myself the wrong way. <laughs> And my friend from the University of Delaware, President Dennis Asanas. Where are you, Dennis? There you go, Dennis. The president of the university. 
and his sons, Nicholas and Demetrius. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you both here. And uh, I like to joke about being known as Joe Bidenopoulos in my Greek-American community <laughs> in Delaware. I only won by 3,100 votes when I ran as a United States Senator. And I think we got 92 percent of the Greek vote in Delaware, <laughs> and the nickname stuck. Small population. But the truth is, I've been blessed with lifelong friendships and political mentors in the Greek-American community. I found inspiration in the courage and principled leadership of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, fought for social justice and for the days, all the way back to the days of Martin Luther King and right through George Floyd. And I thank you. I thank the Church. As a proud Irish American, I felt a great kinship with the Greek American community. The same values define the way we grew up, courage, decency, honor, treating people with dignity as well as an immense pride in the heart and the heritage of our ancestors that they brought with them to America. This is an incredible resilience among Greek Americans, a determination, a determination to keep going, to keep fighting, no matter the odds, no matter what. And there's no greater symbol of the faithfulness and perseverance of the community than seeing Greek Americans proudly celebrate the reconstitution and reconsecration of St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church in the National Shrine last November in Manhattan. The original structure was destroyed more than 20 years ago during the 9-11 terrorist attacks in our, on our country. And in rebuilding that sacred home of the Greek Orthodox Church in the Greek American community reaffirmed that even in the deepest, darkest days, we always have hope for the future, always. And today, let us tap into that same spirit and rededicate ourselves to all the hard work that lies ahead to defend democracy in Greece, in the United States, and all places where it's under threat today. To stand up to the, for the dignity and rights of all people. My dad used to have an expression, everyone, no matter what, everyone, this is not a joke, he would say it all the time, is entitled to be treated with dignity, dignity. And to renew our commitment to leave our children a world that is more peaceful and more secure and more just than we found it. So I want to thank you again, Mr. Prime Minister, for making the trip and for the, uh, the excellent discussions we had today. And I look forward to seeing you again at the NATO summit very soon in Spain and uh, continuing our close cooperation on behalf of our two nations, for all our shared values. But really, Jill and I are looking forward to seeing you in Greece as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. President, Dr. Biden. Ladies and gentlemen, it is really a, a great privilege to be here with you at this bicentennial celebration. My wife, my daughters, my team, myself are tremendously grateful for the warm reception you have offered us. And honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here tonight. I know this is a very special moment for you, Mr. President. I'm sure you see lots of very good friends amongst this gathering. But this visit, as you pointed out, has very strong historical connotations. Modern Greece, like America before it, was forged in the hands of dreamers, of revolutionaries fighting for freedom, fighting for justice. And it was a story of your independence struggle and its eventual success, coming as it did decades before ours, that inspired the oppressed Greeks to fight against all odds for their own freedom. The leaders of the Greek Revolution drew inspiration from what was achieved on this soil. Our ancestors did not just dream of freedom and self-determination. They fought for democracy, Mr. President, that elusive government of the people, by the people, for the people, which was invented in ancient Greece 25 centuries ago. 
And in his annual message on the 3rd of December, 1822, President James Monroe remarked, the mention of Greece fills the mind with the most exalted sentiments and arouses in our bosoms the best feelings of which nature is susceptible. A strong hope, he said, is then entertained that these people will recover their independence and resume their equal station among the nations of the earth. And it is uh, this uh, shared history of struggle, this shared history of sacrifice, that binds our two nations together. It places upon us, as you said, a solemn responsibility to protect and defend the values that our forefathers risked so much to pass on to the next generations. And today, this duty is more relevant than ever. The war in Ukraine, the invasion of Russia, is a chilling reminder that what we took for granted in Europe, that maps cannot be redrawn by force, is unfortunately no longer the case. As you know, Mr. President, we supported Ukraine from the very beginning with humanitarian aid, but also with military assistance. We did so for reasons of principle, which should be painfully obvious, but we did so also uh, to protect a world order that is based on the premise of respect for international law, what you like to call a rules-based international order. Neo-imperial fantasies belong to other centuries. They must not succeed. And they must not succeed not only for the sake of Ukraine, but to send a very clear signal to other authoritarian leaders that any violation of sovereignty will be met by a unified and a forceful response. And this is why it is so important that Europe and the United States stand shoulder to shoulder in this fight. After all, what we are protecting are the values which lie at the foundations of our liberal democracies. And as a prime minister of Greece, but also as a member of the European Council, I would like to thank you again, Mr. President, for your leadership. The sanctions we have imposed on Russia are crushing, and rightly so. But as we discussed, we must not lose sight of the fact that our societies are paying a heavy price in terms of energy prices. And this, in this respect, there is so much more we can do together, the European Union and the United States, to bring down the prices of energy, uh, and in particular, the price of gas. And uh, as we reduce our dependence on Russian hydrocarbons, we also need to use our market power as larger purchasers of gas to deliver short-term relief to our households and our businesses. Mr. President, I really mean it when I say that the relationship between Greece and the United States is today at an all-time high. Last Thursday, our parliament ratified the new defense and cooperation agreement between our two countries. And this new cooperation manifests itself, not just in the naval base uh, at Suda Bay uh, on Crete, which I hope you will have an opportunity uh, to visit. It has been uh, described by many uh, as the jewel in the crown of our fantastic military relationship. But it also manifests itself uh, in the port city of Alexandropolis, uh, in northeastern uh, Greece, just 500 miles from the Ukrainian border. And apart from its military importance for NATO, uh, Alexandropoli, as we discussed, is rapidly becoming a regional energy hub, an entry point for liquefied natural gas into the Balkans and Eastern Europe. And Greece plans to play an important role as a gateway for electricity produced from cheap renewable sources, primarily sun, in the Middle East, in Africa. And we're very happy, Mr. President, that the US has provided its unequivocal support for these projects. A quick word about our region, Mr. President. You are extremely knowledgeable about the Cyprus issue. And please use all your influence to put the negotiation process back on track in accordance with the UN Security Council resolutions. No one, no one can or will accept a two-state solution in Cyprus.
Balkans are also still quite fragile. We must keep their European perspective alive and tangible. Greece is a pillar for regional prosperity and security. And we will always seek peaceful ways to resolve our differences with our neighbors. I'm convinced that we can achieve that. We, we place great emphasis on the three plus one scheme, a framework that connects the US with Greece, with Cyprus and with Israel. And at the same time, Mr. President, we will continue to invest in our armed forces and make it very clear that we will not accept any violations of our sovereignty and our sovereign rights. And after all, we're doing uh, so in order not just to strengthen Greece, but also in order to strengthen NATO's southeastern flank. We will continue our long-standing cooperation between our defense industries. We will launch the process for the acquisition of a squadron of F-35 aircraft, and we do hope to be able to add uh, this fantastic plane to the Greek Air Force before the end uh, of this decade. And I'm happy that on Friday, Lockheed Martin officially expressed its interest in investing in Hellenic aerospace. Of course, the bonds that connect us, the bonds between America and uh, Greece reach far beyond our shared history, security and defense, and across the board from uh, trade to tourism, uh, technology, and cultural exchanges, there is so much, ladies and gentlemen, to be mutually gained. As you know, Greece has come through severe adversity. The recent economic crisis was extremely painful for our people. But Greeks have proven their resilience. Democracy in Greece has proven its resilience. And today, Greece bears no comparison to the Greece that became the poster boy of European financial crisis a decade ago. Our economy is strong. Early this year, we paid off Greece's outstanding debt to the IMF two years ahead of schedule. <laughs> we are creating um, jobs and investing in new industries, such as digital and clean tech. Many European companies wary of their dependence on China, are bringing back manufacturing jobs to the European continent, and Greece is an obvious candidate to welcome them. And many American companies are investing in Greece for the first time. Companies such as Microsoft, Pfizer, they're doing so because they see a country that has an advantageous geographic position that is both a member of NATO and the European Union, a country with a stable government that is welcoming foreign investors because Greece, Mr. President, is back and a promising future lies ahead of us. <laughs> Let me conclude, Mr. President, by saying that you recognize many Greek-American friends amongst this gathering tonight. You've mentioned uh, several of them uh, by name. Uh, they call you uh, Bidenopoulos uh, <laughs> for a reason, although I suggested that maybe you should be called Bidenakis. <laughs> it would rhyme well. I'm sure everyone in this audience is particularly proud today. I'm equally proud about what Greek Americans have achieved in the United States. Let me especially acknowledge the presence of your new ambassador to Greece, George Tsunis. I met him at my office uh, a few days ago. The first thing he told me was a story of his parents leaving a small village in Western Greece called Platanos. We're honored to welcome George back to his second homeland. And Mr. President, marking this uh, bicentennial, albeit with a year's delay due to COVID, matters deeply to the Greek people uh, and to me personally. Uh, recent events make this celebration that much more pertinent. The fight of uh, democracies against autocracies is the defining battle of our generation. And the, prom the proud moments 
from the history of our two nations give us confidence in what we can achieve in the future. We should never lose sight of what our ancestors fought for and that which we must now defend. All of us should draw great strength from their example. I'm hugely grateful to you, Mr. President and Dr. Biden, for hosting this magnificent gathering. And I took your word very seriously that you do intend to visit Greece to reciprocate this visit. Thank you again all very much. You know, my husband has always told me that all politics is personal. And I think that you can see that in the relationship that Joe has with the Prime Minister. And Mareva and I are already making plans to see how we can work together. And talking about, you know, personal relationships, I want to thank each and every one of you for the relationships that we've formed with all of you and the support that you've given us. So please enjoy the People's House with food and drink and music. So we look forward to saying hello. Thank you.